following is a local resident producers program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of CATV2, Oshkosh Community Media Services, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Everyone, welcome to the relaunch of Ayan Oshkosh. I'm Cheryl Hentz, and many of you probably know that uh, we had a uh, pretty successful show on the air for about 10 years, and then uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, uh, because of some crew changes uh, in their personal lives, uh, a professional project that I was going to be taking on, and so forth. I decided to pull the show off the air and uh, during that last year or so um, we've had so many people come up to us and say you know we miss you are you coming back and it, it just didn't seem feasible at that point however uh, in the last few months some very generous folks stepped forward they have made a relaunch repos uh, possible again and so here we are <laughs> And sometimes it just doesn't even feel like I ever left. Uh, there are a few things that are different this time around, though. Um, number one, um, we've got a whole different crew, of course. Uh, the second is the show will air for two weeks at a time instead of just one. Um, we also are going to be on YouTube, so you can watch for us there. And let me just check my other notes here. Um, I guess that's it. New replay times, and, and those will be popping up throughout the show. And I think that's it. So we're very happy to have you back and uh, tell your friends about us. And I'm also happy to welcome two old friends to the show, uh, Joni Geiger and Cheryl Rosenthal from the Oshkosh Area Humane Society. And uh, they're joining us tonight for the relaunch. And uh, like I said, very, very happy to have them here. So. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you. It. And welcome you, back. Thank you. And you brought me flowers. Yes. yes. And yes. so yes. I'll be putting those in a vase when I get home. Yeah. You know that's a bribe. <laughs> <laughs> a bribe for? You have always been so good to us. And we just want to make sure that we keep it that way. Oh, well, so. you don't have to give me flowers, uh, but they're well, much Well, but you appreciated. deserve that because uh, it is nice to have you back. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff tonight, mm -hmm. you know, general type stuff that the mm -hmm. shelter sure. does. But, but two things right out of the shoot. Um, you've got a new campaign that you're launching. We and Excited. so we want to talk about it. It is called Paw It Forward. And I'll just kind of hold this up here. And if we can just maybe get a tight shot on this for just a moment. Um, and then we're going to talk about what Paw It Forward is. There we go. All right. All right. So, so what is Pot Forward? Well, Cheryl, I'm going to let you take <laughs> it, and I'll fill in the blanks. Okay. Um, we do a lot of brainstorming at the Humane Society, and uh, we have a lot of services that we provide to the community. And we got to thinking about it. You know, we touch a lot of lives, and we decided maybe we should let people tell us how we've touched their lives. And uh, Rhonda came up with. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that if um, people want, if we've touched lives, maybe people would like to paw it forward. Because one of the things about our humane society is we need to help the next animal in line. And so, you know, you kind of pay it forward. So if we've touched your life in any way, uh, whether we have found your dog or we found you the perfect cat to adopt, or uh, maybe we helped you... Um, with a behavior issue that you were having with a cat or a dog, now it's your chance to pay it forward or to paw it forward um, $1. And we got to talk about it when we were brainstorming. We thought, what if everybody in Oshkosh gave a dollar? If everybody gave a dollar, how many dollars would that be? 
Um, and we thought, wow, you know, a dollar doesn't look like very much. But you know, Cheryl, if I handed you a dollar and Joni handed you a dollar and everybody on your crew handed you a dollar, pretty soon you'd have ten dollars. And after that, you'd have twenty dollars and thirty dollars. And so, even though people think, well, a dollar, that isn't much. If everybody gave a dollar, it would make a huge difference to the homeless animals here in the Oshkosh right. area. And so we're launching our program called Paw It Forward. And we're asking people to actually, if they want to, to make a 30 to 45 second video using their dollar and say why they want to paw it forward for the Oshkosh Area Humane Society. And we're going to put those on our Facebook page. We're going to put them on our website. We're going to be on YouTube. We have a lot of, you know, we have a site on, on uh, YouTube. And we just want to have some fun with this and hear about why people think, uh, you know, and you can tell other people why you think they should paw it forward. And we're going to, we're launching the campaign and it's going to run for three months. Okay. And uh, we've set a lofty goal. Yeah, we have. Indeed. We have set a lofty goal. But we're hoping that, you know, people will see the fun in it. Mm -hmm. And our goal is, what's the population of Oshkosh? I don't know. Isn't it like 63, 64,000 I, I, I right now? I would say about 63. Okay. Yeah. So we based it on that the population of Oshkosh, and we thought, we're going to aim high. We're hoping that half the people in our community love us mm -hmm. and love animals. And so we're hoping that we're going to make uh, $30,000 for the Humane Society uh, through Paw It Forward in the next three months. So how did you arrive at thirty thousand? Just based on the population. Based on the population. Okay. Based on the population. If everybody gave a dollar. If everybody uh, gave okay. a dollar, and this this is a first for us because this is through social media. Um, previous before, a lot of our campaigns were um, more, um, you know, the traditional way of raising money. But this is going to be obviously on Facebook. We're going to have this on our website. We're going to encourage people to put it on their Facebook page, mm -hmm. and then hopefully this will just paw it forward, and we'll be able to do this. So this is this is kind of exciting for us, and and kind of scary too. Yeah, you know? and we want to have fun with it. We I think do. we want to engage with the community. Um, and one of the ways to do that is through social media. But, you know, that still doesn't mean if somebody isn't on Facebook or they don't have, I don't have one of those fancy phones for a QR code, um, you can still walk right into the shelter and say, I have my dollar, I want to paw it forward. Right. And we're going to have some fun with that too because we want people to come in and when you paw it forward, we want to take your picture. And we want to post that on our website. And just, you know, um, kids get so excited about being able to do something. And a dollar. And everybody can give a dollar. Yeah. Everybody yeah. can give a yeah. dollar. And, and again, the whole thing is one dollar plus a dollar plus a dollar makes a big difference. Yeah. And well, let's talk about that a little bit. Well, if, if you had to quantify this, like what kinds of things could you do with thirty thousand dollars oh man how many I mean, yeah. how many spay and neuters would that <laughs> oh, pay for yeah. how I many mean, that would know. be that alone uh, thirty thousand dollars that would pay for if you know oh my math is so terrible right now <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> day too. <laughs> but um it costs us approximately sixty dollars an animal to alter it um okay. so i mean so really think about how many how many cats and dogs we could and we're doing so many programs for outside the uh, or in the community but but not just for shelter animals but you know we have trap neuter return programs we have uh, programs where we're helping people that sometimes don't have you know they're they don't have the money to be able to do some of those things so so it's it just opens up a whole venue of things i mean back in the day Cheryl, when you helped us out at the at the shelter at Dempsey Trail, we you know we were very limited in our scope of what yep. we could do, but our services have increased so much, and we we're doing so many things. And like right. Cheryl says, we've really given back to the community. We we truly have, um, you know, because a lot of people have animals, and and even if they haven't gotten them from the shelter, we've touched a lot of people. I mean, we're we're the ones out there. We had a car accident last night um, where someone, you know, unfortunately got hurt and there was a pet in the car and and we were there um, we were there to help that person and and everybody's okay including the pet but that's that's our job that's what we do mm -hmm. so that person could come in this morning or actually sent a family member and and pick their pet up yeah so I mean that's those are the kind of things that a lot of people don't think about but that's what what we right. do a lot of times people think all we do is we pick up stray animals and then we adopt them out yeah 
and it would be really easy if that's all we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's you know the educational programs that we do in our area schools. Uh, I, I I have seen that program grow over the past 16 years. Mm -hmm. And I started out my morning today with 45 fifth graders from Roosevelt School and uh, talked to them about what, what does the Humane Society mean to the community and what does the community mean to the Oshkosh Area Humane Society. And it was delightful to hear what these kids had to say and, and to have that program. But all those things take time and money and effort. Um, and we can't do half of the things that we want to do without the support of the community, whether it be in in-kind gifts, but most definitely cash donations mm -hmm. uh, to keep us going. Right. And, you know, we feel the pinch like everybody else. It's been a really hard winter. Um, we have to shovel our sidewalks and pay our heating bills. And, you know, here again, sometimes people think, well, I want everything to go to the animals. And if you really stop to think about it, um, I think we're very fortunate to have Joni as our director because she keeps that focus on the animals come first, the animals come first. Everything that we do from where the thermostat is set to how much water is being used, it all goes to benefit the animals. And we can't, we can't take care of animals. You know, yes, it's nice that my office is maybe 68, 70 degrees. Um, but isn't it also important that the, that the pets that are under our care are living in a decent temperature and mm -hmm. they have water and they have clean bedding. And so we have to look at the whole scope sure. of not just the services that we're doing, but the people that are providing those services um, and, and the work that our staff puts in. We have a lot of hard workers and I think mm -hmm. that's the key is um, our staff and our organization, our volunteers, we have such fabulous volunteers. They are so willing to do the work. All we need is the support both financially and verbally of our community to get that work done. And that's what we're hoping Pod Forward will, um, will inspire people that, mm -hmm. you know, wow, that's really important to me and I want to show them that uh, we care and we care about animals yeah. and we support the work that, that this Humane Society does. Well, and, and you're really right, Cheryl, because, uh, you know, when, when you say that people really don't know everything that you guys do. Now, you just did a presentation at my church this past weekend. Mm -hmm. I've been around you guys for years. I mean, I served on your board at the time that we got the new shelter mm -hmm. built where mm -hmm. you guys are now. Um, so I've been associated with you guys for years. And even I, you know, <laughs> sat there thinking, they do that? You know, it, it's just there's so many things yes. that you guys do, uh, a lot that people take for granted. Sure. Mm -hmm. They just sure. think so. that, well, if they don't realize or they think, well, that's what they're supposed to be doing. But it takes manpower and hours to mm -hmm. do those things. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. what people need to, you know. Um, we, we change hats a lot, uh, you know, uh, and we're always scurrying. And so we're just hoping that people will really have a lot of fun with this and, um, and and see the the benefit of, of and I think their you know Cheryl, Cheryl spoke very eloquently about she takes a lot of pride pride in our organization mm -hmm. and our people and our staff, and we'd like our community to do that too. We'd 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 like them to step up and step forward and say you know I can give a dollar I can give a buck you know and mm -hmm. um, and to pull it forward because it really makes a difference because right. we our organization is seven days a week. 365 days a year we don't we don't get days right. off you know right. we, we just well, we're going all the time today with the children uh, I asked them who belong who who owns your school who owns the school and of course they all said the principal <laughs> <laughs> and then I said well who pays the principal and then they said well the school district and well then from the school district I said well you know who pays the school district and they said, well, that's taxes. And I said, who pays the taxes? <laughs> and it finally got to, oh, mom and dad. So who does school belong to? It belongs to them. And people in our community need to realize as a nonprofit yeah. organization, we belong to the community. Yeah. I work for you. Um, and I'm proud to work for you. But I can't work for you if I don't have the finances to work for you and right. to do all the programs that you want to. So I'm hoping that this will just kind of be a win-win a, a for our community and for the Humane Society, that uh, people just have some fun, fun with it, sure. and uh, and at the same time, um, you know, be a great fundraiser and see what people have yeah. to say. 
Some of these videos are just hilarious. I mean, they're really <laughs> hilarious. People have to tune in and watch these videos because some of these, we had, we, we've asked a lot of different individuals and a lot of organizations to help us out and to paw it forward. So they're making these videos for us. Mm -hmm. And as the three months progress, uh, people will be able to see those. But uh, I mean, s people were very clever in some of these. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. I don't want to give it away, but we had one that um, did a little puppet show. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> very cool. To pot for it was very cool. So, um, yeah. So, again, uh, we're going to be doing that for the next three months, and there will be posters around town. Uh, we will have pizza toppers and bag stuffers at the grocery store, and we're going to have it on our Facebook page. We're, we're so excited. At holiday time, we reached over 5,000 likes at Christmas time, and we're already over 5,500 likes. Wow. So uh, Facebook. our Facebook page has really taken off, and um, it's, it's a lot of fun. And but it's also a great resource, mm -hmm. uh, a great way to communicate with people in our in our community. So. Yeah. And one thing I want to touch on, too, uh, because I think this is sort of a misunderstanding that a lot of people have, because it's the Oshkosh Area Humane Society, um, and, you know, you used to be run by the city. Sure. I think people still think that they do. you are supported yes. uh, in a large degree oh, gosh, no. by the city, <laughs> and right. it's, that's far from the case. Yeah. So right. you yeah. want to talk a little yes. about Absolutely. how much money you get? Sure. Um, our, our budget is approximately $900,000 a year. We employ almost 40 people. Now, most of those are part-time, um, but, but we are we are maintaining uh, anywhere from 23 to 2,500 animals a year. And because we're a life-saving shelter, which means we don't euthanize for space, which, so we have a lot of mouths to feed. We have a lot of bills to pay. Um, and, and the truth of the matter is, is we do have a contract with the city to take in stray animals, and that's it. That's as far as that goes. What we get from the city is only about 9.5% of our total budget. So the rest of that budget has to be raised through things like this, through you know our memberships or, and our donations and, and, and just by the support of the community. So, so it is, um, it's a non-ending, just constant um, battle to, to keep, keep it going. Um, so, th as I said, things have just increased tremendously because we're providing so many services now. So out of a approximately $900,000 annual budget, you're probably only getting about 85,000 from even. the city, not even. Okay. Yeah. yeah, not even. So, yeah, so it's a uh, uh, yeah, so it's uh, I know people there's a mis misunderstanding about, you know, being operated by the city yeah. and being supported by the city, but it's a very very small percentage of our budget. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, um, above and beyond what my partner and I do as Humane Heroes, here is a check from us oh, for your hey, you. hot oh, favorite yeah, campaign. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> now obviously I'm not sitting here shooting a video right now, but... Um, but you, um, can, you can do that at home with your, you know, maybe have a dollar and do that with one of your dogs or, you know, <laughs> you, you can have some, have some fun with it. Okay, but, thank you. But sure. thank you very You're much. Welcome. You're welcome. So, very nice. Awesome. So... Anyway, okay, well, um, should we talk about, uh, well, here, when this is kicking off officially, now we're taping this on March 20th, mm -hmm. this is kicking off tomorrow? When mm -hmm. does this kick off? Tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. Yep. March 21st then, and it goes until what date? Uh, I'm sorry, we just said three months. <laughs> <laughs> we did. So we just said three months. Yeah. So, so we're going to be in March, June. April, May, June. Probably around June 21st, I okay. would think. Yeah. Just about the time summer actually yep. begins. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. And so that, that, that's good. Yep. Yeah, that's so for the good. entire yep. spring. Yep. yep. Okay. The whole spring. All right. And, and we're going to be doing some things, I'm sure, at the shelter to keep, you know, having people come in and, you know, donate keep their the dollar. Going. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to, you know, keep people excited about it. and. Uh, maybe we'll come up with some more crazy videos of, of our own. Yeah. So we got to get our staff involved. And so where do people, if, if they're, you know, using their little camcorders or their phones or whatever, and they're shooting a little video of themselves, and you said 30 to 40, 45 seconds? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, we and, just want it short and sweet. And where do they go to post it then? On your um, Facebook page? Or they, where do they should email it to us. Okay. Email it to us um, at jennifer at oahs.org. Or if they want, they can email it to Cheryl at oahs.org. Okay. So and, and then what we'll do what is what file format does it need to be sent to you? Like in a wave uh, format or I think in a I think it's an image. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, 
Well, they can call and find out. Yeah, sure. Call and find out. Four two four two one two eight. We have tech was, people, so we're yeah. <laughs> we're that's not like, that's not <laughs> us. I just wait till it gets in my mailbox, and then yeah. if, I can, if I can't upload it, I email them back and say, "Could you try again?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Well, it'll all get figured out, and sure. I think it's a great campaign. And well, uh, it's like you. anything else, because it's our first attempt at a. a uh, a social media yeah. fundraiser. Mm -hmm. um, there may be a few bumps and hiccups along yep. the way, but we'll we'll get it all sorted we out. Will. And the main thing is, um, it's all for the animals. Sure, yeah. it's for the animals yeah. and and for people to um, have some fun with it sure. and encourage their friends to do the same. Sure. So. Well, great. Well, we kind of touched on this before, but mm -hmm. spay and neuter is a, a huge, huge mm -hmm. problem. And, you know, we're going to get into specifics and, <laughs> yeah, you know, that kind of thing. But I, I just have to say that, you know, we've got puppy mills, which are mm -hmm. horrible. But then you've got backyard breeders or hobby breeders, mm -hmm. hobbyists. And those people drive me nuts, too, because they sometimes feel like they just have to let their, their dog or their cat have just one litter so that their kids can experience birth, or they want to pick up a little extra cash, you know. And, and they are very different from puppy mills, mm -hmm. but in my opinion, they're just as damaging. You know, they're taking away, even though they're finding homes for those animals, they're taking away homes from animals that are already here. Right, right. And that were here before those animals ever hooked up, if you sure. will. Right, sure. And right. so I just, th I think it's terribly irresponsible. Right. Um, but so why do you think that people feel like they have to allow their dog or their cat to have just one litter? And why are they so opposed to getting their animals spayed and neutered? I, I personally think that most people, it's, it's an ignorance problem. They don't recognize the impact that one litter has on. And, and if everybody thinks that way, they just, they just don't realize that this litter of kittens or this litter of puppies actually makes a, that big of a difference. And so I, I, I think you're right. I think people are looking at maybe a quick cash, you know, as far as puppies go and that type of thing. But I really feel that a lot of people just don't know. And what is so sad, Cheryl, is that um, every year, four million cats and dogs are put to death in shelters across the country. Four million. It's because there's That's no That's disgusting. Homes. It is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's absolutely horrible that that's happening. These are healthy, young, social animals. Yep. And just because there's no space, there's no room, and nobody has come to adopt them, those animals are being right. put to death. Nobody wants them. And here again, so many people, when, when pets are having little pets, um, a lot of times it's accidental. And the excuse is, well, I found homes for all my pets. But what people don't realize is when you give those kittens away or you sell those puppies, whatever the case might be, are you spaying and neutering them? Mm -hmm. So you're sending those pets out into the world and they start to procreate and we end up with more puppies and kittens. And so they're not, they're, they're responsible for more than just that one litter. And I, I don't think people are thinking about that either, that, that they're responsible for that. And in my eyes, a responsible breeder is someone who, uh, let's say that I have some wonderful purebred dog that has a great temperament and I decide I you know I have friends and neighbors or relatives that say oh I'd love to have one of his his or her puppies um, are you serious okay if if I can find homes for all of those puppies before they are born that's one thing but so many of these puppies and kittens that are coming in the world there isn't somebody waiting for mm -hmm. them but there's countless countless puppies and kitties languishing in shelters, waiting, hoping, mm -hmm. praying that somebody's going to come in and adopt them. Yeah. And there they sit. What is it, Joni? Less than 25% of the animals that are currently in homes come from shelters. If you ask mm -hmm. people, where did you get your pet? Got him from my neighbor, got him from a relative, got him from an ad in the newspaper, I got him off of uh, different internet websites such as Craigslist. Um, 
Very seldom do you hear somebody say, oh, I got mine at the shelter. Now, we're hoping that that's going to be changing because here again, people have that myth, that misconception in their head that animals that are in shelters are damaged goods. Mm -hmm. um, I have a shelter dog. I have more than one shelter dog, <laughs> but that's beside the point. I adopted my dog from a shelter. Why does that make him a shelter dog? He, both, two of my dogs are dogs that were strays that came into the shelter. What was my shelter dog before he came into the shelter? He's not a shelter dog. He's a dog that ended up at the shelter. Mm -hmm. he's, not, he's not a product of the shelter. The shelter didn't uh, create him, create him um, but he ended up at the shelter. And I'll tell you, I have two of the nicest dogs anybody would ever want to have. And they're, I, I don't like that term. You know, it's a shelter dog or a shelter cat. They are animals, companion animals, that have ended up at the shelter. They are not a product of the shelter. They are a product of our society mm -hmm. um, that people have either abandoned or have given up on. And we need people to start to rally around these animals because they are not damaged goods. Um, they are, have been neglected or abused or have been, um, they haven't been attended to. They've right. been neglected. Um, if, you, if you don't train a dog, you're not going to have a right. good, good companion. Right. Sure. And I don't want to knock responsible breeders because right. there is a need for responsible and professional breeders. Right. Uh, but there's a difference between those and the backyard breeders are the ones, right. like we talked about, that just want to have, you know, a litter. Sure. You know, and, and you're like seeing that. so many of these Yorkie poos and yeah. cockapoos and the you designer, know, the designer breeds. breeds and, yeah. and they're becoming. That cost an arm and a leg. Yeah, they're becoming very, very popular. And they're really um, just mutts. Well, if they're, 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 they're the truth. Sure, that's they're what mixed they are. Breeds. Sure, yeah. absolutely. So, so there's a lot of things out there. Uh, obviously, in our area, and there's different areas in the country that have a bigger population problem with different species. In our area, we have a cat issue. We have a cat problem with the just the sheer volume of, of cats being born every year. It's just it's it's unbelievable. It's it's incredible. In the southern states, now they have a dog problem. You know, they have, in their kennels, you know, they'll have three, four dogs in one kennel. And that's how they're housing them. It's just incredible because there's not a lot of spaying and neutering that's happening. You know, so, so people have to recognize that the, these issues are just, they're, they're man-made. I mean, they're, you know, we're not, right. these, they're not doing this on their own. We're, we're allowing it. We're um, allowing them to we're not, breed. Yeah. And what is it, Joni? We see four times as many cats as we do dogs. Four times. Last year we took in over yeah, 500 kittens. Yeah, we've got an interesting kittens. graphic up right now. And oh, yeah. I, I think yeah. that that yeah. sums it up, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. I mean, and, and there's only, you know, people, there's only so many homes, you know, and if people aren't utilizing a shelter as a place to get their pet, you know, we're in competition with all these other d d kittens Entities, that are, yep. yeah, that are out there and, the, you know, that are being born on a regular basis. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's an incredible problem that is so easily solved mm -hmm. and it's spaying and neutering right and it's that's the key and, and you know i think it would be important to point out spaying and neutering you know everybody's like oh spaying and neutering i would never do that to my pet why not when you spay and neuter a pet they live a longer healthier life and mm -hmm. i don't know about you i'm hoping that my dogs live as long as possible and my cats also mm -hmm. and spaying and neutering can do that spaying and neutering also helps to eliminate some behavioral issues uh, such as 90% of spraying in cats can be eliminated by spaying and neutering. Um, and pets are less likely to roam and get into fights with other animals. So it's a win-win. You know, yeah. we, we, we have to stop equating our sexuality with our pet's sexuality. <laughs> um, you know, for them, it's just an instinct, a drive. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, most dogs, most cats are perfectly happy just chasing that pretend mouse and, you know, laying in the catnip or laying on the couch um, or you know your dog's just as happy chasing butterflies as he is chasing you know another dog yeah uh, so it's you know people need to understand that spaying and neutering is an investment in your pet mm -hmm. um, and it really will make a difference in 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 the quality of life for your pet well, so, you know, I know that the cost of spay and neuter uh, at a local vet depends on, you know, the, the breed, the size, the weight, that kind the of age. thing. Mm -hmm. And it can vary from mm -hmm. vet to vet. Sure. 
Um, it, but if someone feels like they can't afford it at their vet, you guys um, have stepped up and you are offering a lower cost spay and neuter program. Right. So let's talk about that. Sure. We are, we are the middleman, so to speak, for a transport for um, a low cost spay and neuter clinic that is down near the Madison area. So um, we don't actually do the uh, low cost here at our shelter, but we are stepping up so that people can sign up. We, d we do all the registration, we collect all the fees, we do all those kinds of things. We're there for people when they bring their pets in and then, w then uh, everybody gets loaded into a van and then they get taken down to the Madison Low Cost Bay Clinic. They stay there for the day and then they come back the next night. So, um, so it's, a, it's a very easy process, but the, the beautiful thing about this, Cheryl, is, is because for people where this is a stretch for them to be able to afford to um, and and we want to make that clear that this is this is for individuals that are looking for a low cost alternative um, they can you know sign up with us and they can get their their cat or dog fixed mm -hmm. um, and so we we're hoping we can encourage people especially with spring coming around the corner we call it kitten season <laughs> yeah they're we're just coming in already yeah, yeah they're they're coming in already and um so so we're really hoping that we can start to make a more of an impact you know so that eventually the shelter will really see a reduction in the number of stray cats that come in even surrendered cats, but stray cats in particular, and the number of small kittens that come in on a regular basis. Right. So. And it's going to take a lot of people, you know, it, it, in order to see that drop in population, sure. there has to be a lot of compliance. 80% is compliance in order yeah. to see a drop. Well, right, yeah. and so, and so it, it's so important, and it's, it's just something, like, I can't stress it enough. For me, it's an investment in your pet, uh, in their health, in their well-being, and in your well-being. Um, what uh oh i forget now jen was quizzing me this morning i think it's uh the number of unaltered male dogs are more three times as likely to bite if they're mm. unaltered so if that can help with their personality or their temperament um uh, why not do it why you know what what's the hesitation yeah so um what about um did, did you want to touch at all on the cat stray cats in the area at all about the numbers, you mean? Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's you know? touch off guard. Yeah. All um, I know is it, we were in there a, a few weeks back, and oh my God, the cats yeah. you guys have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I probably saw about nine dogs, eight dogs, something yes. like that. Yeah. But I couldn't even begin to count the number of cats. Yeah. Um, we, and this is our slow season. So that that's what's really kind of amazing about this. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. I, I wish. I don't know how to make that impact for people as to how many cats really come through our shelter and how many are in need. They're, they're desperate. Uh, so many come in not altered, obviously. And, um, you know, we, we have um, about 53% are stray cats. So they're, they're coming right off the street. Um, pregnant cats come in for constantly. Um, you know, and, and besides the small litters. And, and Cheryl's absolutely right. I mean, when we have, when when people just don't realize the impact they make and when they give away those kittens or they give away their cats and then they have babies and those babies have babies and those babies have babies. I mean, it's just, it's a losing battle. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, so someone has to stop the cycle. And that's yeah. really, really very important. Well, there important. is a statistic out there, and I'm not sure if it's correct, but one unspayed female and her offspring in seven years can produce 420,000 kittens. That's almost half a million. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a lot of kittens. That's a lot of kittens. And female cats start, pre, start reproducing at four to six months? Yeah. Yes. yes. Wow. Your little kitten can become pregnant at four to six months. So babies having babies. Mm-mm-mm. And, you know, what do we teach our children? It only takes once. So when that <laughs> cat scoots out the door, it only takes once. Yeah. And you end up with a litter of kittens. Yeah. Well, and, and pe so many people say, well, you know, my cat or my dog doesn't get out. Well, the best of intentions sure. are great, but all it takes is, once. you know, you <laughs> open the door to let the pizza guy in or to sign for a right. package from UPS or something. And if that dog or cat pushes past... Sure. 
it doesn't take long. Yeah. And they're they're, they're, out the door. they're driven by instinct. They, yeah. they, I mean, they can't help it. I mean, well, they're just doing a, what comes. And they can. Their sense of smell is so much greater than ours. You know, they can smell another cat in heat or a dog in heat. Uh, and so again, that's where that drive comes from, and that's why when you spay and neuter them, right. that dissipates. So, so we want to encourage people. You know, if they're, th it, we obviously we want them to do this, but call the shelter, stop in. It's called the Spay Me program. Okay, and it's low cost, um, and they can come in, and we can get. We have a transport every single month that goes out. Um, we and and if we need to, we'll we'll do two. You know, whatever we need to do to to accommodate people so that they can get this done, right. because it won't be long, and spring's right around the corner, right. and and cats are going to want to be getting outside and doing those right. kinds of and things. And we may so. want to mention too that included with the spay neuter, they're also able to have some vaccinations mm -hmm. provided. The rabies at vaccination that is totally free, time. part of the and there's yep. pain medication. If you know, if you think if you have a female cat or dog, and mm -hmm. you think you'd like to have some pain medication, you're going to be talking to a veterinarian. It you know, it isn't. It's very reputable. We've right. had wonderful, wonderful success with this uh, in the area. Sure. So. And you've done that for a few years now, haven't you? Yes, we have. Yeah, we, we've. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the last time I looked at the numbers were, were right around, um, and we've, we're very proud of this. We did around 800 um, pets already. So those are 800 pets wow. that have been spayed and neutered because you know we've been doing this. So, right. um, and, and that's a lot of babies not being born. Right. Yeah. And then it's important to remind people too that every animal at our at the, our shelter is spayed and neutered by our facility mm -hmm. before they go up for adoption. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so we're we're not adding to the pet overpopulation right. problem. So it's really important for people to realize. You had mentioned before about people finding homes when they do breed. Uh, they find homes um, on the internet mm -hmm. through I don't care whether it's Craigslist or they put something on Facebook, um, they put something in the newspaper or somewhere else, free to a good home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can we talk about that for a moment? Because I, I think, you know, here again, people have very good intentions, and yet they have no idea the kind of danger that they are potentially putting their pet in mm -hmm. or the offspring of their pet. That is incredibly irresponsible to me. I, I, I'm not saying people shouldn't try to place their pet on their own, but they have to ask some questions. They have to take some responsibility. They have to know where that pet is going, and they should be doing some kind of matchmaking with that pet. I will tell you, we just had a situation here where we had a dog that came in. We tracked this dog. This poor dog was was approximately a year and a half old. That dog was on Craigslist at five different times. And he had literally, in just 10 days, that poor dog had five homes. I, I mean. In 10 days? In 10 mm -hmm. days. I mean, that, I mean, uh, now granted, that, that, was, <laughs> that was an unusual situation. But that dog, by the time he got to our shelter, because the last person turned it into us, he was so shell shocked, and he was he he just didn't know which way was up. I mean, it was what a what a horrible experience for mm -hmm. this dog. Yeah. What a terrible experience to have to go into, like five different homes, and with five different sets of rules, and and people just literally gave him up within 24 hours, and then he moved on to the next one, and it was just I, I mean. What are people thinking? Yeah. I mean, Unreal well, expectations. Well, that's true, but then sometimes I just don't think that they do think. I don't think that they understand what can happen to an animal well, if it's advertised on Craigslist or, you know, given away on a free-to-a-good-home ad. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that a little bit, if we could, because I, I don't want to put the fear of God in people, but I think you maybe need it to, needs to be. Right. You need to ask you know? questions. I mean, there are not, it's like when I teach the kids through the shelter, not everyone you meet is nice. Mm -hmm. And, oh, you have a litter of kittens. Oh, well, I'm going to pose as somebody who wants kittens, and I'm going to bring, maybe the little neighbor girl wants to go with me to see the kittens, and maybe I'm going to take these kittens and feed them to my snake. Or maybe I'm going to abuse them. Or maybe I'm going to give them to, uh, to a laboratory. They use live animals when for fighting dogs, with mm -hmm. fighting dogs. So people have to, I mean, these things really happen, Cheryl. They, yeah, they really, do. really yep, they happen. They really do. Um, 
I, I totally agree with you. I'm I'm a hundred percent on board. I mean, there's there's Class B dealers out there that are looking for these these free to good home ads. And Cheryl's absolutely right. They're selling them to labs. They're getting money for these animals. These are just a product to them. They they have absolutely no feeling. There's no there, emotional connection. There's exploitation all the way. I we've seen where where dogs uh, are used as bait dogs. In other words, they're used to train some of these other dogs. It, it's just, it's horrific what people do out there. So people, yes, apps, I totally agree with you. This free to good home thing, I mean, people have to do their homework. They have to ask questions. We, we, when we tracked that dog, we went back and we looked and we said, well, well, who'd you get it from? Well, his name was whatever. So they knew a first name. That's all they knew about the person. Who does that? Yeah. You know, who yeah. does and nothing, that? And nothing, and let's face it, nothing is free. Yeah. Nothing in this world is free. And these My are flowers were free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's like you have to take responsibility for, yeah. for those animals and, and have some compassion for them. And, and it doesn't mean that, I mean, things happen, life changes, you know, maybe a pet isn't working for you at this time, but you have to do the right thing. If you, you, if you want to find placement, ask those questions like we talked about, you know, don't be afraid to do that, those kinds of things. This is your cat do or dog. Home, do a home inspection, you know, oh, you, you want, uh, I, I, you'd like my dog? Sure. Well, you know, how many children do you have? You know, how, long, how many hours do you work? You know. Or take them to the shelter, for heaven's sakes. Right. You know? And, and I, I guess that always kind of bothers me. It's like, what's so bad about going to the shelter? Oh, well, my friend adopted this dog that I found because we didn't want to take it to the shelter. I would hope, if I got lost, I wish I could go to the shelter because I know I'm going to get two, at least two meals a day. I'm going to get walked a couple times a day. There's volunteers that are going to come in and play with me. We're going to treat you They're medically. They're going to ta take care of all my medical concerns. Uh, you know, the shel people have to stop thinking that, oh, the shelter's a bad place, the shelter's a bad place. It's not a bad yeah. place. The, the pound no longer exists. Mm -hmm. yeah, it just yeah. doesn't, I yeah. mean. That it's, stereotypical it, yes. right. idea of, Sheltering you know, has, animal sheltering has changed tremendously in the last 20 years, just tremendously. I mean, shelters are, are not only are they businesses, but they're also very responsible in, in how they're handling and managing. I mean, they're behavioral programs. There's, we're, we're treating medical, we're treating all kinds of issues. We're, uh, these are professional people, mm -hmm. you know, right. so. They're um, professional people that have a passion for animals, just like I would hope that surgeons have a passion for the medical expertise that they have. Right. We have a passion about animals. That doesn't make us crazy cat people or right. dog people. We care about animals, and we, we want to help our community have a better understanding of their pets and a better relationship with their sure. pets. And so bringing, bringing your pet to the shelter does not make you a bad person. Right. You're trying to do the very best thing that you can for your pet. And yes, sometimes we, ha we, we ride a very, very fine line. Because we love pets so much, we can't imagine anybody giving a pet up. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we have to step back and say, you know what? That person did the very best that they could, and just think, they brought their pet to the shelter because they wanted to do what was best for their pet and for their family. What more can we ask of them? Yeah, sure. Let me just say this, though. Since this is now, this, this is a, I'm always going to have to be thinking about this now, every show I do, because it's going to go on YouTube. So potentially anywhere, <laughs> anyone anywhere, anywhere can see it. So I guess I would say this, you know, if they're going to, we're very fortunate here to yes. have you guys, yes. and this, this whole area is very fortunate to have really good, responsible, sure. professionally run shelters. Every place in the country is not that responsible, though, and You're there right. are some horrid, horrid shelters. You can't even really call them shelters. No. They're, right. they're dog pounds. Yeah, those are pounds. Elsewhere <laughs> in, in the country um, where some animals are still gassed to death, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, in particular down in the south. So I guess I would encourage people, if, if they're watching this and they live somewhere other than here, if they need to surrender an animal, you know, find out what your local shelter or dog pound does. Good for you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Ask right. those questions. Right. Be responsible. Yeah. Right. And then if you don't like that option, well, then try and 
rehome it yourself, but ask some of the same questions sure. that a shelter right. or rescue operation would ask before just handing it over. And charge a little something for the right. pet. There's nothing well, wrong with it. And I think you it's know? because you're talking about the whole United <coughs> States, it's important for people to understand your shelter in your community is what your community will support. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't like something that your shelter is doing, you need to speak up and you need to help that shelter become the shelter you want it to be. To turn your back and say, well, I don't like what they're doing, so I'm not going to use them. That is, to me, that isn't the right attitude. That's the shelter in my city. I don't like what they're doing. I'm going to go and volunteer there and see what I can do to help, or I'm going to go and, and make things different. Isn't that what Joni Geiger did when she wrote her letter to the editor? That is what Joni Geiger did. And so everybody in their community needs to, instead of saying, oh, I hate my shelter, I would never use it, ask yourself, why wouldn't I use it, and go to your shelter and say, I don't like this about you. What can you do to change this? What can what can the community do? And then be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. instead How can of, I help you do something different? Correct, correct. Yeah. And because that's what animal sheltering is all. We didn't evolve because Joni Geiger said we were going to evolve. We evolved because the community, other people besides Joni, saw the need and we evolved and we started using information and education and people went, yeah, that's what I want to see done in my community. That's how I think it should be. And then the whole community evolves, and then your shelter evolves. Mm -hmm. That's how we became a life-saving shelter. We kind of stepped out in faith to become a life-saving shelter. We weren't sure that the, that the community would support that, that we were not going to euthanize animals for space. But as people who love animals and who work there on a daily basis, we didn't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And... We told the community that, and the community thus far has truly embraced that idea. So, so you have to not only question your humane society, but offer to help make the positive changes that will make a difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I want to just touch very briefly on licenses. Now, <laughs> this is, as I said, we're taping on March 20th. Folks have until the end of this month, right. the 31st, mm -hmm. to get their dog and cat licenses at a lower fee. <laughs> yes, because there up, is a late oh, fee. I think it goes up $15 uh, it, it, a license. There is a, yep, there's a late, late fee that's yeah. attached to yeah. that. Thanks so. for reminding me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, but, well, I just got mine the other day, but I, I typically wait until in March sometime. Mm -hmm. But you know, the thing is, you know, I, I talked to one person, they said, eh, the, the dog never gets outside, you know, who cares? Mm. But I'll tell you, it's not just Big Brother down here at City Hall you know, looking to see if, if someone calls about a barking dog, mm, is that dog licensed? It, it's not just that. If that dog accidentally gets out, that license is a way for them to That's get a, back home. It's their ticket home. Yeah. It, you're absolutely that right. That and microchipping. I'm a big proponent of microchipping yep. as well. But um, that's a way for them to find sure. their way back home. And a lot, of, guys. a lot of people don't realize that when you license your pet, a portion of that comes back to the shelter. So it's a small portion, but a portion of that. So you are helping your local shelter mm -hmm. when you license your pet. So that's something to, to keep in mind, because you're right. It's not just about Big Brother and then the government well, getting their and, cut. And what, yeah. is, what is a license, Jolie? Five dollars? Oh, I can tell you what it is, yeah. Okay. It's five dollars so if, if your pet is spayed or neutered. Right. right. And they have to be current on their rabies shots. And what is the fine if your dog isn't licensed? Uh, it's $243. It's so not really worth it. So $243. Five dollars. Hmm. Let me see here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can do a lot with two hundred and forty-three dollars. Yeah. So yeah. you could paw it forward. I <laughs> a few times. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Two hundred forty-three times. Yeah. More than just a few. <laughs> um, what other things would you like to talk about? Um, because is there anything more on spay and neuter that no, you just want to that touch on? just that the importance of it. To, you know, and we always try to have fun. You know, and this, but we also try to educate. And people need to understand that this is the solution. Um, animals will literally, um, you'll be saving lives. Um, right. And and if people would just spay and neuter, yeah. I animals mean, are dying needlessly in yes. shelters. Yes. So we so need we absolutely. need to stop that. It's kind of like turning off the faucet. We need to turn it off right. at the source. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, um, shelter trek is always. Uh, isn't it a different name this year though? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so let's well, talk can, about it. Can we back up? Can, oh, sure. can sure. we talk about our birthday? Absolutely. Sure. We're we having a birthday, birthday March okay. 29th. 
uh, it's our birthday, nine years at 1925 Shelter Court, yeah. nine years. Hard to believe. Uh, we're going to be having cake, uh, and uh, we have uh, a merchandise booth where people can come, and an opportunity for people to see our new paint job on the inside, our new vibrant colors that yes, keep us all away. Yes, very nice. Yes. It's lovely. Yes. It's, just, it's just a really happy place. It's from 10 until 3 on March, uh, Saturday, March 29th. So mm -hmm. happy birthday to us. Yes. Uh, so come and see us. Yep. And Bring your dollars. Bring your dollars. dollars. Yes, bring, bring your dollars. dollars. Yes. Bring your so. dollars. So, yep, the pod forward will be going on there. But, um, or, and or if you would like to bring some treats for the animals, uh, rolled rawhides, uh, mm -hmm. pepperoni, the cats could use some new sparkle balls or little cat toys and uh, canned dog food. Check out our website, you know, but uh, just an opportunity if you have never been to our shelter. Great opportunity. Come and meet us. Find out who we are, uh -huh. what we do. Yeah. Um, yep. We're a lot of fun. Yep, we are. Um, and, and one thing that um, I don't know if we touched on it here. I know you talked a little bit about it at at my church this past Sunday, but um, your food bank that you have, if, oh. if someone is in, mm. you know, they're in a little bit of dire straits financially, but they've got a pet, um, it might, they feel, be difficult for them to um, get dog or cat food. Mm -hmm. um, you have a means to help them keep that pet. Yes. Yes, we do have, we are able to offer them food. I have to, I do admit though, our food pantry has been really mm -hmm. low. Yep. It's been a long, hard winter. Um, and for so, a, for a lot of people, for a lot of people, and for us to yes. keep those shelves, you know. So here again, if you need food, we want you to come to the shelter. We don't want your dog. We don't want your cat. We want to help you feed them. Um, but we also can use other people in the community if you have a few extra to dollars step to step up and help stock that food pantry, so that when somebody comes, um, we don't have to hesitate in giving them in giving them food. Are there particular kinds of food that you prefer? Because I know everybody has their animals on different food, and I learned the hard way about changing food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. yeah. I learned the hard way. We, we had a pretty smelly house. <laughs> so many farts. I never <laughs> smelled such bad stuff in my life. But So you never want to just change food just like that. But right. what kind of food do you recommend? Well, actually, you know, we try to stay to mostly a Purina diet at, okay. for the shelter for, and, and we can, that can apply to people at the pantry too. Um, you know, the pantry food, you know, we're, we're grateful for anything we get, to be honest with you, Cheryl. Okay. But, um, but we do try, people need to think about, you know, nutrition is very important for everyone and obviously for pets as well. So people should try to buy something a little bit higher grade, but you know, again, we're just grateful for what we get. Right. So okay. um, we'll take any Anything at that. At, at right. that we try point. to feed the Purina mm -hmm. one, and if we are donated other foods, we'll we'll do a mix, mm -hmm. um, like a I think it's like sixty forty or right. seventy five. Yeah. Well, just like you whatever. said, you don't want to change. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to change them yeah. too much. Yeah. And you know the Purina products are a good middle of the road. Um, you can get it at your grocery store. You yep. can get it at, at, yeah, it's at any. It's convenient. Yeah, it's convenient. It's convenient for people mm -hmm. to buy canned, or purchase. Canned dog food, canned pate style cat food, we are always in dire need of mm -hmm. uh, those things. And I don't think I don't think the dogs care yeah. what kind of canned dog food it is. The cats are a little fussier. They like the pate. Uh, anything that's fishy, ishy, uh, you know, they seem to enjoy that. And of course, too, we're also thinking of cats. Sometimes cats in shelters come down with upper respiratory infections and if it, their nose is plugged, if they can't smell, cats won't eat. Um, they rely on their sense of smell to eat. So the fishy ones are, you know, usually the most palatable to them. Um, I certainly wouldn't be dining on them, but I'm not a cat. <laughs> so, uh, so those are, people can check out our website, you know, if, if they do want to, you know, make some donations. We have our entire, uh, we have our most needed list and then we have our needed list. Okay. And uh, we've kind of changed, our wish list is now our are bigger items that we're, we're hoping for. Um, but the everyday things, the, those are our needed and most needed items. Right, right. So, and, and there's, there's a, a, a nice price range. Uh, sometimes, you know, when people are out grocery shopping, if you can afford it that week, grab an extra bottle of bleach, grab some extra paper toweling, or grab a few cans of cat food, or, you know, whatever you feel that you can donate. And all of those things really add up and are really important. Uh, there is, uh, I know that uh, Pick and Save has a, um, 
They have some prepackaged things that people can purchase and put in the barrel for the shelter. Mm -hmm. And Festival Foods has uh, their Paw Away Hunger program, where when you're shopping, you can make a donation to our food bank. Uh, and that way, during emergencies, um, let's say that Joni says, well, we, I, this is a fact, we just got five rabbits in, we don't have any romaine lettuce, can you go and get some? I can call a Festival Foods and say, I'd like to take uh, 10 heads of romaine lettuce out of our food bank. I go to a festival and get that. And it's, it's just really nice that people, uh, that's another way that people can support sure. okay. support the shelter. So I, I know it's a ways off yet, but I can't even believe that we're halfway through March oh, already. I know. Um, <laughs> your shelter truck, it has changed its name. What is it called now? Step Out for Animals. Step Out for Animals. And will it be in September again? It will be September 27th. 27th. Okay. Mm -hmm. It will be at the Expo Center. Oh, it's moving. It's yeah. moving. Mm -hmm. um, and it will be Step Out for Animals featuring the Purple Pride Parade. Um, you know, Pod Forward is an opportunity for people to say how the shelter has touched them. Um, we want people to come out and walk for the animals, raise pledges for the animals, do the same thing, um, show their pride in their shelter. The Oshkosh Area Humane Society doesn't belong to Joni and I and Rhonda and all, everybody who works there. It belongs to the community, and we want them to put on your purple. Put on your purple like words. Yeah. Put on your purple. <laughs> I'm wearing purple. Uh, Joni says, I never realized you wore so much purple. Yeah. And I said, I never did either until somebody pointed it's it out. But <laughs> so, no, red is. Oh, red. Okay. So, <laughs> what, will the, what will the route be at the Expo Center? There are some wonderful, believe it or not, there are some wonderful trails out back there. Really? Which, it's yeah. kind of a, a, a hidden little gem back there. Um, lots of different trees, scenic areas. Um, very, very nice back there. So, yeah, it'll be a first for all of us. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, okay, so that's uh, so it apply, it's, it's We're trying to appeal. Um, in the past, a lot of people, oh, I'd love to come to your walk in September, but I don't have a dog. And now the advantage is going to be Anybody and everybody can walk, and if you have a dog, you can bring it. So yep. we're trying to get more people involved. We really want it to be a parade. We want the kids to decorate their bicycles, de decorate their wagons, uh, you know, dress up as a family, you know, see how much purple you can wear. Uh, just really have a lot of fun with it. Um, sure. And, and come out and show your purple pride. And there will be prizes for, um, for the different costumes. But most importantly, uh, I think this year we are dedicating this first Step Out for Animals uh, to our medical fund. Uh, okay. Our medical fund, it, what, $80,000 a it's year? It's over $80,000 $80, a year. $80,000 a year. And so uh, wouldn't it be great if we could raise $80,000 in pledges uh, to help the shelter's medical fund? Great. So, um, and so, and if they don't want to walk or they don't have an animal that they want to walk with or can walk with, they, they can, can still, still make a donation. They can still Absolutely. pledge. Absolutely. They can still make a pledge. And uh, there will be more information forthcoming. Okay. Uh, we don't have all the details, but we do know the date. We know that uh, it will be a morning event again. Okay. Uh, but we really want people to you know, start thinking about what are you wearing to the Purple Pride Parade? And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. All right. Excellent. Well, so just to wrap up then, we've got uh, that coming up on September 29th at the Expo Center. Uh, for the next three months, you'll have your Paw It Forward mm -hmm. campaign. Uh, take your dollar or more down to the Oshkosh <laughs> Area Humane Society and uh, make yourself a little uh, movie to, to give to them. And I guess, uh, you know, just be a responsible pet owner. Yeah. Right? That would be great. So. We'd really appreciate that. And if, you, and if you're not sure how to do that, give us a call. We'll give you information. We're just a wonderful community resource of information, and we're there to help. All right, excellent. Guys, thanks so much for being Thank here. You, Thank you, Cheryl. It's always you. such a joy, and I, too, always learn things. Yeah. So it's, it's a great experience. So thanks very much Thank for you. being here and for everything that you guys do. Appreciate Thank you very it. much. So. And that will do it for us. Thanks for watching. Thanks to the crew. And we will see you next time. Until then, keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh. Yay! <laughs>